Seth. Welcome back to the Pastor Pod. We are here again, episode 85. If you're new with us, I'm Josh. I'm a pastor in Venice, Florida, here with my good friend and co-host, co-anchor, co-friend, Jay Mudd. Hey, Josh. Good to be back on the podcast with you. Um, listen, you are uh, fresh off of vacation. How was vacation? It was a great week. Yeah, we're uh, came back from vacation. And then the week right when we got back, we had our mega camp sports camp, creative camp. So it was a, a lot of fun. And it was like a shock to the system to go from vacation to let's do this. But it was a great week. And I enjoyed you, get, getting away. We went, went to Orlando for a few days. And yeah, uh, what'd you guys do? Anything exciting? We we didn't do a lot. I mean, we we did we well we did a lot, but we didn't go to like Disney or right. we went to Legoland one day, which was awesome. If you've not been to Legoland, check it out. I'm a big fan. And uh, but we swam a lot, hung out a lot, ate good food, and I just I turned everything off. I didn't work. We didn't record last week, so it was a. I actually I actually unplugged. We didn't record last week. No, we did not. We uh, we we took a break. Uh, anyhow, so good. I'm glad you guys got a chance to get away and enjoy yourself and Lego Land, one of the uh, I guess lesser popular parks in Orlando. Um, Disney's just too crowded right now. I wouldn't go there anyway. Even if you could, I wouldn't go there. Um, so anyhow, you, you live on the back door of Disney. I mean, you're like the back door. Like yeah, like literally, I watch the fireworks every night. It's great. No sound. I mean, I'm I'm not that close, but uh, last night we lost electricity and internet and everything, and I, I wanted to go and check and make sure uh, I, I didn't miss anything. So we drove out of our neighborhood and went to the school where my son's going to go. It's a beautiful shot behind the school. When you right at the back door of the school, you can see the castle. You can see everything. It's it's kind of elevated enough where you can see everything. That's cool. So yeah, I live really close, but anyhow, that's neither here nor there. No one listening cares where I live at or what I can see out my back window. So today we get to talk and continue, uh, you know, having good, healthy conversations about the church, about pastoring, about life. And today we're talking about um, over-programmed churches, over-programmed churches. Josh, we got to define what that means because I know everybody now is going, what do they mean by that? Because what's a program? What's not a program? What do I mean if I have mm -hmm. too many programs? What What does that mean is, you know, so let's define what overprogrammed church is. When you hear that word, what, that term, what do you think, Josh? So I think it's a struggle we all have as pastors and churches is what do we put our energy towards, right? What do we what do we promote? Uh, what's most important? What's what's uh, what's important, but maybe not the main importance at any of your church? And I think depending on where you go to church, depending on what kind of church you go to, or what kind of church you pastor or lead, or even if you're a volunteer in a church, um, you'll find that. Um, every church has their programs. Now, a program for me would be uh, a ministry or a resource that is used that has a set amount of weeks and a set of, a set a set curriculum. Um, and usually, when I say program, program isn't a negative thing. A program can be used by God, um, but I think there becomes a, a maybe a, a struggle or an issue in, in churches when the program becomes more important than the mission. In other words, like when the program becomes more important than relationship, where it's mm -hmm. just plug and play. And, and really, when you think about programs, I mean, as Americans, we like programs. We like things programmed. We like to know it when it starts. We want to have it laid out, put it on our calendar. And uh, and so programs are incredibly important in every church. But but today, I kind of wanted us to discuss that because so many times I think we're over-programmed and under-discipled in churches. There's been a couple of books that I've been reading lately about how the American church um, has a lot of options for people, right? We have a lot of next steps for people, but what's most important to help our people grow, not only from someone that's that's without Christ to knowing Christ, but learning how to grow in their faith and take next steps. So that's kind of what I would say. It's a long answer, but over-programmed churches would be for me, like imagine a box, kind of like unstuck church and uh, Tony Morgan talks about a lot. There's like this, basically like imagine a whiteboard with a box and there's just all these programs that are dropped into this box. And so when it comes to our churches, many times we say, hey, you need to go to all these or you need to pick five or, <laughs> you know, depending on your your schedule and that and whatever those are are most important for you. And, and many times that's how we look at programs. And they're yeah. all equally important. 
Well, and everybody wants the program that's going to meet their specific niche net, you know, whatever it may be. Everybody's going to want that. Um, as as you know, I'm in the church planting phase right now where we're establishing, uh, you know, direction, things like that. And, and and last night we actually had a conversation. We're recording this on on Thursday. So a Wednesday night, I had a conversation with a group of guy, uh, guys and ladies at the table at my dining room table about, you know, the church coming up. And I, you know, I often ask this, especially in these early stages, what questions do you have about the church? You know, theology, my family you know, direction, you know, next steps, where we're heading, you know, timeline, whatever it may be. And it's funny, last night, everything began to go towards the program route. It was funny that we're having this conversation. That's exactly, well, what are we going to do about this? What are, how are we going to do this? How are we going to do this? And I would say, especially early on in a church, especially if you're a church planner or something like that, you, you have to be very careful because you can become church program driven really, really, really quick is I have to have all of these things in place or, mm -hmm. you know, all those boxes in the whiteboard on the whiteboard. I have to have all that in place right away or we're not going to be successful or we're not going to be, mm -hmm. you know, looked at as a church, whatever it may be. Uh, I think as your church grows, Josh, I think some of the programming of that church will grow with it. Um, and, and, and that's natural. It's naturally part of growth mm -hmm. programs, as you said, are not bad, um, but they can cause conflict. They can cause sideways energy. They can cause a lot of different factors just by the nature of, I guess what you said earlier, which is extremely important is, is distracting us from the real mission of what we're, what we're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. uh, we can get caught up in doing a lot of good and programs do a lot of good. Hear me out. They do a lot of good. But that good sometimes um, makes us feel good about what we're doing. It makes us feel good and gives us good feelies and ticklies and things like that. Um, I can't believe I said ticklies on a podcast. Ticklies. But... That's a... <laughs> <laughs> I know what you but, mean, though. <laughs> but it makes us feel good about like, hey, we're doing something, but we're, mm -hmm. we're just being busy versus actually making progress mm -hmm. in the right direction. Uh, we're not really growing in our faith. We're kind of just entertaining ourselves, entertaining our faith. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not necessarily growing or taking new steps or or challenging ourselves um, in, in in the right direction. Now, some programs, I believe, are absolutely necessary because that program fits in, in inside the big bubble of the mission of the church. So let's mm -hmm. take – you said a program could be like a ministry of some sort. So let's take our, our student ministry could be, I guess, considered a program within the within the life of the church. Would you agree with that? I would struggle with using that word because it makes people think it's, you know, like we literally have it programmed out, but we have a time of the week. We have a, we have a focus. So yes, in that way, it, it would be a ministry I, that I has pro, it has programming. But I think uh, what I'm going to do is bring clarification to that. So it's the student yeah. ministry. If it's done right, fits within the overall mission of the church and helps right. disciple, disciple and help grow our teenagers and giving them right. the environment where they're, they're with other people like themselves, right? Same Absolutely. thing with kids ministry could be a program of the church, but then you have programs that are not specific as that they mm -hmm. are more along the lines of, and again, these are all good things, but you could have a program that is, uh, you know, some kind of other thing outside the church that we do on a regular basis. Um, right. I think of programs as these things, and I guess it's the things that they often fight and demand your announcement time within a church service. That's where I look at programs. A lot of times it's like, who's fighting for, cause you know, you get a million people that want their, 22nd thing advertised to the church. That's where I get at. Those become the program things, the things that are uh, become, because I, I'm just going to be honest. I do not like announcement time. I was asked to come do announcements for a church this past weekend. And the guy who asked me, the worship pastor asked me, was joking with me. And he's like, Hey, it's your favorite thing in the world. I was like, Oh yeah, you know me. I love announcements. It's 100% the worst thing you could ask me to do. I would rather preach for seven hours straight than to do a five <laughs> minute, five minute announcement time. Right, I would rather right. preach for five minutes. I would rather be on a hot Island with no air conditioning than do announcements. What's your air minutes. went out in your Jeep lately. So you know what that feels like, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yesterday was bad. You can, I don't know if it's still, it won't be on my Instagram story by the time this airs, but yes, it was really bad. I did. 
errands for 20 minutes and came home and my shirt was soaked. And that was my <laughs> undershirt. My other shirt was even more soaked. Uh, oh, so anyhow, but that's what but I, yeah, think, I, I mean, think of programs. It's the, yeah. it's those things that try to capitalize the, on those announcement time. Right. In our church right. services. Um, anyhow, that's, that's where I go with, with when church. everybody, everybody has a passion for something. Right. And that's a of good course. thing. And so the challenge is as churches is how do we keep the main thing, the main thing? And that is helping people find for us, it's our mission, find and follow Jesus Christ. So that's people that are without Christ and then help them follow Jesus and grow, to become like Jesus and live for Jesus. And then hopefully help find other people that need Jesus. And it's that, it's that disciple making process. And so my thing is, and I think for me, as our church has, has, has been, uh, of course, we're a portable church. We're planning to have our building, hopefully, God God willing, next year. All that to say, we're a portable, established church. Like like the church has been around 22 years. So is there, there's things that we've done for years, or, or there's things we've done recently that serve an incredible purpose. They meet a need, whether it's a recovery group, it's a support group, uh, or it might be a, a you know an outreach ministry, like you mentioned. And they're all wonderful and they're and they fit our mission they fit the heart of we what we believe about the gospel whether, whether that's reaching people that are far from god or helping people come through a brokenness and find healing right so all that's good but then you have to ask the question when it comes to promotion like how do you how do you do all of that and how do you weigh how much time you give each thing and so we've had to create tiers um, on our staff of like of promotion because if it's not church wide uh, we we typically don't share it on stage uh, because if we did it for everyone, want for one we got to do it for all, and, uh, and and at the same time that that might only speak to like six percent of the church, right? So we have our weekly update that we use to send out all that information, and really it's kind of that home base for all the things that are coming up. But it's a challenge because you don't you, you disappoint people sometimes that want you to have that that stage time or that preaching time. But it's a coaching moment to know, like, that's not always the best place to do that. Because everybody I, wants who, because because everybody wants who to say it. They want whoever is the preaching pastor to emphasize it for because for whatever reason, um, most people think that's what is going to get the most attention. Well, and yes, it it does. Was, but Jay, it does right. But it doesn't mean. But here's the thing: not everybody actually follows through. Though I've found that if I make it a big push for a ministry or, or, or a next step, more people are like, all right, let's, okay. But then when you come to the follow-up, not everyone will actually do what they showed interest in. Right. So, right. well, I mean, you are, I mean, the, whoever the pastor is, the preaching person of that day does have the likely the biggest voice on the you know, the opportunity to get the word out. But I was going to, I'm going to go back to what you said earlier. I think it's not about, I think it's about equipping and freeing people to live out their God-given uh, you know, passions, desires, yeah. what God has laid on their heart. Not everything that everyone receives from God as an opportunity is a churchwide mission. Not mm -hmm. everything. Um, I, I can't tell you how many times I've looked at people and they're going, Hey, I'm really passionate about this, this walk that we need to do and this thing. And I, and I'll tell them, mobilize your small group, go to your small group, get them involved, get them involved, go to your neighbors, get them involved, yeah. take ownership of it. I think that's what it comes down to is many times mm -hmm. we start programs that someone else had the idea to do, but didn't have the desire to actually mm -hmm. do it. And right. then the church yeah. goes, okay, I've got to own this now because it was a good idea and I'm going to look bad if I don't do it, or I'm going to disappoint somebody if I don't do it. And so we need to do it. And all of a sudden we start this program that, um, it, it meets a good need. It, it helps people. It does all the good things and brings about the tinglies, right? But I did it again. I threw out the tinglies again. But it doesn't really fit the mission of the church. I think I like what you just said earlier. You know, these things fit the mission of our church, and if they fit the mission of our church, then then we want to see them come along. So I think that comes down to the clarity of what mm -hmm. is the church trying to accomplish. What's the mission of the church? If you have mm -hmm. clarity, clarity on anything, clarity will bring about purpose. Clarity will bring about drive. It'll bring about uh, you know right. uh, direction. Clarity is huge. Where are you going? Who are you trying to reach? What are the type of people? You... Clarity is huge. If a church does not have clarity on where it's going does not have vision 
uh, the people will perish. That's what the scripture tells us. It's not that they're physically going to die necessarily, but they're going to be under straight. They're going to go everywhere. Yeah. Uh, and that's what happens with a church that doesn't have vision or direction or a set pace of like, this is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the word of caution I would give people is have clarity on what you're about, what you're trying to accomplish mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. knowing and help tell people, Hey, at this time and stage, we can only do these three things really, really well. So everything has to fit in those three things. And one day as we grow, if we're able to expand a little bit more, we'll do that. Because again, as yeah. churches grow, they can expand their programs and the things they do and they can accomplish but the mm -hmm. smaller your church so look at your church if your church is a smaller church which um you know statistically we say most churches in the united states are small churches they're not they're not huge mm -hmm. churches right they're probably 500 right. people and under those churches will have a limited capacity on what they can actually do and i'm not before I get hate mail, I'm not limiting God. I'm not putting God in a box of what he can do and what he accomplished. If you want, if you don't know me by now, you know that I can say God can do far more than you think or imagine, and he can do a lot. But what I'm getting at is the capacity your staffing capacities, your mobilization capacities, the people capacity, all those capacities are limited to 500 people versus a thousand people or 2000 people. Right. So when you are trying to figure out what you're going to do, what you're going to bring into the fold as programs, you have to look at going, what can we actually physically accomplish with, with, mm -hmm. with excellence, with well, doing it well, that fits within mm -hmm. the mission of our church. And then it backs mm -hmm. you up. What is the mission of our church? What are we trying to accomplish? Yeah. And, and some of that I get, we have creative mission statements, you know, crafty mission statements, but in all reality, we were given our mission statements. <laughs> we were told what we're supposed to be doing, and that has to be within part of what we're doing. So I've, I've rambled on there, but I think, I think the, the big part is this is we have to understand that when people come to us or people have ideas, they're great ideas. They may be good ideas that do good things. But that may not mean the church has to embrace it and the church has to create a program around it to sustain it. Um, instead, let's start looking at how we can equip and mobilize people yeah. to live out their calling and what God has laid right. on their heart. That's good, Jay. I, I mean, at the end of the day, is the goal to have a full calendar of, of programs or is it going to really focus on helping people take next steps in their faith, seeing people come to Christ, see them baptized, see new small groups started? see ways for people to get discipled. I mean, that that to me, when I think of what gets me excited as a pastor is next steps that are a relational process that help people become like Christ. And you're, you're, you're defining that. But, let but me, the let problem me. is I, I don't want them to go to five things. Because no. most young families, like think about it, families that are, you know, younger people that are working, that are raised, trying to raise a family, they, they cannot do two things. Even maybe even one or two things a week outside of their the, the time with their family, work, uh, coaching, right. sports. So when we think about over-programmed, we're already overly loaded as Americans. Depend even even no matter what age you are. But like at the end of the day, are you becoming? Am I becoming more like Jesus? Uh, that's got to be the greater question. Not just am I signed up for a bunch of stuff, uh, right? And am I, I becoming more like Christ in in my in my life? And I think that's the thing, though, is that's what I'm getting at is the church has a limited like, hey, this is what we're going to promote. This is what we're going to say we want people to do. And what people do, we can't control what people do and how much how many different things mm -hmm. they add into their life. They're going to add as many as they want to add. Right. So right. Poor, let's let's just say Kimberly comes to you. Right. I'm going to use Kimberly or maybe it's John. Kimberly and John come to you and they're like, hey, I feel like we need to do a knitting group at the church. All right. Now, no offense to anybody who knits or anything like that. I think knitting is great. Can knitting be used to help people know and follow Jesus? Can it? it I'm can. sure it can. I'm sure it can. Is that something that the bridge church in Venice, Florida needs to say, okay, well, we need to make sure every Thursday we have a spot for the knitting group to meet so that Kimberly and John can knit with people they invite or is it easier to go, hey, guys, look, I know you're passionate about knitting, and you probably know a lot of people who are passionate about knitting. Here's what I would say is you could take some of our small group material. You could take some of those things, and you could adapt it, and you could get people into your house on a Thursday evening to knit scarves, and you guys could have conversation and see where that goes. And I'd love to hear your stories about how that happens. Yeah. yeah you, All you're of a sudden, the mission to it. It's not just, hey, we want to get together and do this thing. It's correct. Right. So I'm going to have people over at my house all the time for dinner. 
but it doesn't mean it needs to be a, I, I need to advertise that at the church as a program that we do is the mm-hmm. you know dinner with the pastor. No, right. I'm just going to do it. You need yeah. to, we need to mobilize people. I I think people have also just looked at the church as a, as a crutch. Like they're going to do the stuff that I'm called to do there. It's their job to do it. Well, that's the, well, that's the mindset of the American church. You know, we, we, we have professionals that are supposed to do all this because we're not good at it or I'm not, I don't know enough. And so there's a, a principle that I learned back at the Springs, and it was a funny statement. And I, I think every pastor probably does this, but it calls it something different. You probably call it something different, but we call it the year it principle. And you've already, you've already kind of hit on it, Jay. When someone comes and goes, Hey, I think the church should do X, Y, Z. And it's usually almost every time it's a, it's a really good idea. It might not fully come to fruition, but it's like, man, that's, well, I can tell that's, that's something that's really on your heart. And it sounds like, Sounds like you've really thought about this. You've been praying about this. Like, and you're, I mean, you're gifted at this. You know what? I really think you should run with that. And I'm here to help you, but I'd like you to go find five to 10 people, talk to them about that new small group or that new emphasis, and then come back to me and let me know how I can resource you, help you. Well, well, no, no, I no, I don't think you heard what I said. I, I, I think the church should do this. And then usually I'll turn around and say, well, you are the church. Right. God's placed this on you. You're it. Now I'm here to help you and equip you and, and, and we'll, and we'll put some, we'll put some, some energy behind it, but there's way more power to someone that is empowered, uh, that has relational, you know, ability to connect with people, to go at, to go to church and invite people you meet in the lobby and, 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 and service and those in your neighborhood. And, and I've seen small groups start and become so healthy when there's already a relational uh, bank of love and encouragement from these leaders that are already investing in others. And so when they start a group, yeah, we add people, we put them on the list that there's, there's that process, but when they already have like, you know, three or four or five couples that they're already personally invested in and they live next to that many of them aren't in a church or don't know Christ or are already hanging out with them to show them the love of God, man, that's where you really see the Holy spirit do a powerful work and start seeing people not only come to Christ, but people really, get on a mission together. And so I think that's really what we're getting at today is there is a, there's a movement of, of, of the Holy spirit. When we empower our people to do the ministry that God's called them to do. I think there's a, there's a pastor friend of mine. He's a church planter in uh way. I mean, he's a church planter, but he's been, they've been around for a long time in Boston. Um, his name's Jan and Jan used to joke and say, we have too many Chipotle churches. Um, in other words, you can, it's, it's a la carte, you can, whatever you want in the bowl, you put it in the bowl. And he's like, we're going to do these three things and we're going to do them the best of our ability. And that's all we're going to do. And one of the things I noticed, just somebody who's observing on the outside is that church was one making disciples. All right. They were regularly baptizing people, really seeing people grow in their faith, but they were also growing exponentially. They, they, they were growing. They were, they were blowing up because of that focus they had and saying, look, we're not, we can mobilize people to do stuff, but we, as the church, these are the handful of things we're going to do and we're going to do them well. And yeah. if it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit. And yes, we're going to make some people mad. Some people are going to walk away. If you're looking for a church that has a, has as over programmed, you won't have to look very far. There's a church around. I guarantee there's the a thing. church around. Would, would you agree that it's, it's not church size related? That every church mean? is o- probably overprogrammed, d- d- oh, regardless yeah. of how big or small or probably old or new. I-, I would I would agree with that statement. What I'm getting at though is that I mean, there's if you're looking for a program, you probably can find a church with a program that fits your niche, um, and fits what you're looking for. Um, but you have to come back and you have to ask yourself, am I called to this local church? Is this the local church that God has put me at? If it is, and they don't want to do my knitting group. And again, I'm not picking on knitting. It's just something easy that I can pick on. Um, but if they want, if they don't want to do my knitting group, is that something worth leaving for? Is that something getting worth getting mad on? Is that something, because at the end of the day, it's just something I, it's something I can do in my house. I don't need the church to, 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 you know, to, to bless it. I don't need the church to do it. We don't need the church's approval to have a knitting group in my house. I don't need the church's approval to have people over for dinner. I don't need the church's approval to meet with a group of guys for coffee every Thursday morning. I don't need the church's approval to do that. I am the, as you said, I am the church. I'm mm-hmm. called to go make disciples. Now, if mm-hmm. I love to have coffee and I have a passion for coffee and I want to meet six guys every Thursday morning at a different coffee shop and we want to try their coffee and talk about their coffee and talk about Jesus. If I want to do that, in order to make disciples, 
then that's what God's going to use me to do. If I want to use knitting, if I want to use anything, right? You you can use right. anything as a means to help people know and follow Jesus, which fits the mission of the church. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the things I, I was at a church this again, I was at a church this past weekend, and one of the announcements I had to make, um, which I hate announcements. I don't know how much I can say that, but this is a good announcement. <laughs> they were like, "Hey, we want to hear the stories of what God is doing in your life." I actually appreciate that concept of yep. – I think that is something that the church should get involved in. It's like let's hear the stories because you start promoting that yeah. Bob is having – you know, meeting five guys at a coffee shop every Thursday morning yeah. or Sarah um, is 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 meeting single stay-at-home moms at the park every, every Tuesday, and you start hearing those stories. All of a sudden, you and your mind, it reemphasizes the fact that – Oh, I can do all these things and I don't That's need right. it. it doesn't need to be a church announcement and well, need to but be the thing is like church. But I, I thought so, still think those people, wh- whatever God is having them do, they should still loop in the pastors and say, Hey, this is what I'm doing. You know, do you have encouragement or advice or prayers? You know, I think it's always good to loop back and not just run off and be like, I don't need the church, you know, because some people are like, I mean, some people in our culture don't think they need to go to church. They don't think no. they need church at all. You know, I get this. And so I know that's not what you're saying, but there that's is not what a, I'm saying. Right. there's almost like this ad- independence that's like church represents, you know, uh, a huge facility, a huge place or control. And I think there's a, there's a power that comes when you, like you said, are empowered to go connect with people in your daily life and, and minister and love people and then tell the stories, right? I mean, tell the stories of what God's doing. So the church is huge because it's the, it's the faith community that you're together with. And, and and again, that's where we get accountability. That's where we get support. There's a lot. Mm-hmm. Everything should connect back to the church. The one thing I want to be cautious on, you said, I think they should loop back in the uh, the pastor, is that I don't think they need to check you. I don't think you need permission from the pastor. Oh, and I don't think this is what you're saying. Well I, I well, I would say this. If you're using the church name in your group, I think you do need to have well, the blessing I'm and encouragement actually, of the pastors. I, I do think that because then, well, I agree you know, with that because but... there's a lot of things we've had to walk through with people right. where they were consuming certain things and doing certain things. And then you had to kind of like coach them on. Well, hey, I never like, said they were using you, the church's name. No, I'm not. Yeah. I just want to just clarity there. Right. That's this is good. Yeah. But again, <laughs> if you, you don't have to use the church's name and sometimes using the church's name can be a hindrance. Uh, because they may have heard. So, Josh, you've been at the Bridge Church how long? Uh, golly, three and a half years. Three and a half years. Three and a half strong years. Best years of the Bridge's life, right? Um, so you've been there three and a half years. Let mm-hmm. me ask you: Have you ever heard that the Bridge has gone through some rough times where maybe it didn't go through the greatest of seasons? Yep. In any like of church. Yeah. Right. Yep. And every mm-hmm. church, right? So mm-hmm. here's what I'm getting at: is sometimes. What you don't that can actually be an unnecessary barrier. You're just a Christ follower who's having people at your home knitting or you know doing whatever you're doing. Sure, absolutely. You don't have to use the church's name either. Uh, I feel like the church, I think this is actually, I'm going to push back a little bit on the pastors. I think pastors, sometimes we want our names and we want the church's name put in everything when it doesn't need to be put in everything. Well, you should be ashamed um, of your church, though. You should be like, I'm well, not saying no, you're being ashamed. No, don't. I'm not like saying it. you need. No, 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 no. Yeah, I'm not saying like you need to be ashamed. ashamed. <laughs> I'm not ashamed. I'm saying I'm not saying you need to be ashamed. I'm saying sometimes right. people just need to see you as a normal person. That it's not a Agreed. church event. It's yeah, not yeah, a church event. With them. I'm right, meeting you right. for coffee, but this is not a church event. This is this is not me as my church. This is me as a Christ follower who just yeah. loves people and wants to meet with you. And and I think some food and hang out. Let's cook some food. Let's hang out. Let's meet at the coffee shop. Let's hang out. Let's knit some scarves and some mittens in Florida so we can sweat during uh, you know, the <laughs> summer. I don't know. Whatever you're doing, what I'm getting at is we don't need – so pastors, we also don't need to hover over and helicopter mom our, our people, all right? We don't need to <laughs> helicopter parent our people, but at the same time, we need to equip them and give them a safe place where they can get resources, they can get things, right? Um, I think there's just as much pressure on pastors saying, well, we need to get credit for this when we don't need to get credit for it. It's yeah. okay. Oh, we don't, it's okay. Yeah, it's, if you're yeah. discipling and you're shepherding those leaders well and you're sending out those leaders, they know the faith family they belong mm-hmm. to. 
right. that will come about. That will come about. So I, I think a couple of things just to wrap all this up, because I know we've been all over the place is one. Yes. If you're if you're tying your church name to it, please touch with your leadership. I think that's huge. Right. If you're saying this is the bridge coffee meeting on Thursday mornings. Well, OK, your pastor should probably know about that because he's going to find out someone's going to be like, hey, I didn't know you did a coffee thing on Thursday morning. I didn't either. Right. It's one of those <laughs> things. <laughs> when We start that. Right. So maybe do touch if you're using the church's name. I, I'm saying you, I, I don't believe you have to use your church's name. Just go out and be equipped. Um, I do believe you should. Um, you know, part of being and making disciples is connecting them to a church family. This is part of it. You, you're just not out there willing, doing it all on your own and flying solo. You're right. trying to connect them to a church family. So you should be saying, hey, I'm proud of my church and I want to connect them to my church family. I don't have to like promote it as my church event, but I do want to connect them to my church family. That should be part of the goal of That's making right. disciples is Living on mission. I'm, yeah. I'm making disciples that are connected to a church family for accountability and support and encouragement and meeting together and all those, all those things that we're called yeah. to do in scripture. That's part of making disciples. That's helping people know and follow Jesus is connecting them to a faith mm -hmm. family. So that is not, that's not up for debate in my opinion. For sure. um, but I think it's you owning and saying, Hey, God called me to do this. God called me. I was talking to somebody the other day and they were like, Hey, are we going to have a group specifically for twenties? I said, do you know 20 year olds? Yes. How about I equip you with inform, you know, whatever you need and you invite 20 year olds over to your home and hang out with them. As far as smart group. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Mm -hmm. I don't need to deem that right now. Like that's not the stage of life I'm in right now. I can't, I can't. Well, like, everybody needs a circle though. Everybody needs a, everybody needs a group. Correct. So, everybody yeah. needs a group, but I yeah. can't have, cause if I have something for twenties, do I have something for thirties? I don't know. Do I have a 30 year old anywhere? I don't know. Do I have something for whatever, you know, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everybody's looking for their circle, but God may be using you in this time and place to start that circle of whatever it may Absolutely. be. Absolutely. So uh, hopefully yeah. that ties it up. I'm not anti-church. I'm not ashamed. Josh just said on the podcast for everybody it here. It sounds, that like, I sounds sound like, like you're not. Too. I'm ashamed of a church. I'm not ashamed of a church. I'm saying sometimes it's an unnecessary barrier. I I no, can handle. The reason people. I said it is a lot of people feel that way though, in, in America. Oh, I mean, if okay, you read okay. the stats, I mean, I, it is a real thing. You know, people kind of. And I, what I'm saying is, and for for sometimes. It's sad. There is a reason, but I'm saying at the end of the day, um, we connect with people, we build relationships with people. And then hopefully, you know, through that relationship, you share your faith, you invest in them, you invite them to church with you, you go to lunch, you talk about Jesus, you invite them to your small group, you do life with them and you see them transform. See, that's, that, that's the relational process and programs right. support that, but the program's not the point. No the program is just a vehicle of relational growth of leading someone closer to Jesus. And so I, I have to continue to be reminded as a pastor and for our, and for our church, the point of the program or point of the ministry is to help people find and follow Jesus. And if the program isn't serving that purpose, then we need to ask better questions. Do we need to tweak this or do we need to change it? Or, you know, back into 2020 days, a lot of churches went through a complete overhaul because all the, all the things they were doing, they had to ask the question, you know, after COVID or even during, uh, what are we going to do now? And so for me, we had to, we went through a revisioning process as a church, you know, Will Mancini's, you know, the vision frame, uh, many, many pastors have done that. And so we've kind of really through, through a lot of prayer and time said, okay, what are the next steps we want everybody at the bridge to take? And so we have four things we have, we want everybody to worship faithfully every day and every week. So what that means, we want everybody to spend time with Jesus alone worshiping God in their daily time with him. And then, and then we call everyone, we want everyone to be in, in worship, you know, gathering in worship on Sundays. And then we want, secondly, we want everybody to connect relationally in biblical, com biblical community. We want everybody to be in a circle, to be in small group. And then third, we want everybody to live generously with their time, talent, and treasure. So serving, giving, going. And then the last one is we want everybody to engage missionally by sharing and showing, showing Jesus. So just to give you an example, Jay, I know as we talk about all this program stuff, at the end of the day, if, if everybody at the Bridge Church is essentially, you know, pursuing Jesus in those spaces of their lives, I believe there's a greater chance they're going to grow to maturity. And there's a lot of other things that we're, that doesn't cover. But if I'm worshiping God every day and every week, you know, and I'm connected, I'm growing spiritually with other, other Christians, reaching people, I'm living generously and I'm engaging on the mission. 
right? I'm I'm going to coffee. I'm I'm inviting my friends to to play golf and and invite that friend that maybe needs encouragement or salvation. There there there's there, that's the movement of the Holy Spirit, and I think that's got to be the most important thing. Uh, that's the most important thing as a church because that's the next steps. That's the process. Process over program, and uh, so that's something I'm. I've probably spent more time on this in the last three years than I ever have in my ministry. So, well, there you go. And it, yeah, you go. And now you have an example of what that looks like when somebody does the three years worth of work of going, Hey, we need to make sure that we are, we're focusing in that. So, uh, there's a lot of content here. There's a lot of conversation that we continue to have. And so we'd love to hear from you. Uh, you can reach out with, to us at the at gmail.com. Uh, you can connect with us on social media. Uh, but, but Josh, before we close up shop today, before we get off of uh, this podcast, I think it's worthwhile for us mentioning something exciting that's happening in the fall. We've already had a handful of people interested um, in reaching out, interested in everything from I think we got new. Uh, I think you said somewhere in the New Jersey area. We've got the New England area. We've got Ohio that showed interest. So this is not just a, a Florida thing where we're at, uh, but there's a cohort we're starting, uh, the Healthy Leader Cohort. Um, and it really is just a time for us to uh, take this podcast type thing to a different level where we're having uh, deeper, more more intentional conversations, uh, two way conversations, because no one's talking back to us right now, a two way conversation. Um, with a handful of individuals who are in leadership positions at a church. And these are not all senior pastors that have showed interest. Uh, we have other other leadership uh, people as well. And so we want to continue to extend that invitation as that is filling up, but not quite full yet. Uh, we want to cap it at about 12 people, individuals, 12 individuals or so. So um, we are getting interest, but haven't capped it yet. And more information is coming out. So Josh, how can they learn more about, if they're interested in getting information about the cohort, How can they? how can they do that? Yeah, you can you can you can email us thepastorpod at gmail, or you can go to our website uh, thepastorpod.com, and there's a there's an interest form there. You can fill out, let us know if you're interested, and then we'd love to hear from you on some of the some of the different themes and topics we're going to be we're going to be walking through. We want to shape it around what what a lot of our pastors are dealing with, and so we think already what we're going to be going through is going to be really relevant and helpful, but. We're really wanting to shape this around the group that's going to be joining us. And this is completely free. I don't know if we've said that. Um, I know when people hear cohort or any type of opportunity, we're we're not charging for this. This is uh, completely free. And uh, and then we're, yeah. we're, we're also providing some opportunities to connect in person. I've got some ideas to really have fun together as a group, but also have some chances to really drill in. Right. And I uh, encourage you. And we're going to learn from each other. There, there's a lot of great guys joining in that I think I can't wait to hear what what they're learning. Um, and once again, like like me and Jay have always said, we, we do this pastor pod to grow. And hopefully you're growing as you're listening and joining in. We bring in guests, but I can't wait to learn from those that are going to jump into the cohort. I, I, I agree. And again, it is completely free. Josh has covered all the costs of me being there. So um, he's paying me to be there, but it's free for, no, I'm joking. <laughs> it is completely free uh, for everyone uh, to attend. And and again, everything that we do, we're going to try to uh, make it feasible for everyone, even if the stuff that we, uh, even the stuff we do outside of just the Zoom calls. And so really what that's going to look like is going to look like uh, Zoom calls because we are stationed all over. And then there is going to be some opportunities where we're going to try to get some people together um, to chat through in person, uh, maybe have some fun together. I like to laugh and have fun. And so uh, that being said, check out the cohort. You can go to the pod at gmail.com, email us or the pastorpod.com and learn information about that. But Josh, another good episode, another good conversation about programs in the church and the importance of um, having, you know, direction and clarity and um, really, you know, simplifying things in some ways. Um, and mobilizing the church to be on mission. So uh, that being said, from Josh and myself here at the Patch Pod, thanks for tuning in. Hope to see you back here next week on the Patch Pod. Have a great weekend.